Hola, it's Brian De Los Santos. You're about to listen to a great episode of How to LA, but a quick reminder. This podcast is listener supported, and right now we're in our super short spring member drive. So head to LAist.com slash join HCLA. Thank you. Studios. This is How to LA. I'm Brian De Los Santos. Today, we're back with another installment of our How Not to Be Lonely in LA series. And we're going to get moving. Getting active in group settings has been shown to promote bonding and improve emotional and, of course, physical well being. There are a lot of groups in LA to help you find these kind of connections, too. How to LA producer Megan Botel is going to take it from here. All right, so we've been on this journey exploring loneliness and human connection for a while now. It's taken us all around this city, and it's introduced us to all sorts of Angelinos who've experienced something we all feel at times, isolation and a yearning to connect. And today we're talking about the kind of connections one can make through physical group activities. Whether you're into salsa classes, Check one, two. sports leagues, mixed martial arts, or even ballet, lowering down, control the landing, and up, down. In a city like LA, there are endless ways to move. And we'll be exploring some of these activities. But first, let's talk about why and how moving together might help us feel more connected and less alone. Doing activities together, first of all, gets people into proximity. And that is one of the things that's kind of important for human friendship. This is Jamie Krems. We need to be face-to-face to to make most friendships. That's just how we're made. She's an assistant professor of psychology at UCLA, focusing on human friendship. Doing activities together when we are face-to-face can increase these feelings of closeness, which might actually sort of set off an upward spiral of feeling close. So I feel close to you and we do something together, which makes you feel close to me and value me. And the more that you value me, the more valuable you become to me. Because friendship is really about this idea of shared value to each other. We know that we will help each other out in a pinch. She says there are a bunch of research-backed reasons why doing activities in rhythm together promotes such closeness. So there are two things going on here that might be referred to as parts of the social glue. One is this idea of behavior matching. Maybe I mirror you or mimic you a few seconds after you cross your legs, I cross my legs. And we know that that can lead to feelings of rapport. And then there's this behavior of synchrony, which is really about actions that are matched in time and rhythm. It's a coordination kind of thing. And we also have pretty good data to suggest that behavioral synchrony can lead to feelings of higher closeness with the people we're in sync with, higher feelings of something called entitativity, which is a feeling like you're in a group with your partner, maybe higher levels of trust with that person, and perhaps even being more cooperative or pro-social toward that person or those people. And that's particularly the case when you're in sync in larger groups. We have this idea for a long time that activities that are physical when you're moving in time and rhythm with people, like at a concert or a religious experience or in sports, somehow leads to closeness. And what people have done more recently is follow up this anecdotal idea with experimental evidence. So for example, if I asked you to tap a visual metronome on a computer in front of me and I was tapping at the same time, 
you would feel closer to me than if I was tapping um, asynchronously or not at all. So there is something about synchronous behavior and movement that really seems to galvanize these relationships and potentially promote something that we'd call self-other overlap in neural representation. So basically, while these physical, somewhat sporty activities can be great, the type of bonding that leads to friendship can happen just by doing something super simple in synchrony with another person or group. Having friends, I should say, is considered the next best thing you can do for your health behind quitting smoking. The data suggests that friends are really important for your health. They potentially uniquely combat loneliness, and they might lead to longer life, quicker recovery from surgery, lower stress in the body, and they're even related to feelings of higher well-being, greater thriving, and potentially economic mobility. Most of the work on loneliness is about feeling like you don't have relationships that meet your needs. And not all of it has really distinguished whether you feel lonely because you lack friends or you lack romantic partners. But what I'd suggest is that, and this is certainly true if you have any married friends, married people can still feel lonely. Those with genuine friends rarely do. That's not to say that you can't feel alone in a room of people. We know that that's true. But genuine friends seem to potentially uniquely combat loneliness. So to give one example, in a study of older men in Sweden, I believe, their rate of heart attacks was lower if they had friends, regardless of whether or not they were in romantic relationships. Jamie says that both in the research world and just in the social zeitgeist, people tend to underestimate the power of friendship and sort of forget that friendships are valuable. It is like a computer running a program that is necessary for it to stay on and do its job, but we forget that that program is running. We are so well designed to engage in social behavior that we forget that we are engaging in social behavior and solving really difficult social problems until we start to fail at them. And that fits with the fact that we are just now starting to realize, at least in the media and somewhat in academia, how important friendships are because people are now really failing at them. So we need friends, and moving together in synchrony is a great way to find and keep them. After a short break, we'll get into one really popular option here in LA. I feel 100% better than I did before I started playing pickleball. Imagine if you could charge your electric vehicle at the places you already love to eat, shop, and play. Whether you're at the movies, on your weekly grocery trip, or running errands at your local mall, Volta EV charging stations are built around your day-to-day and located in your community and nationwide. All you have to do is check in, plug in, and go about your day. It's EV charging made convenient. Download the Volta app to find your new favorite place to charge. The emotion that comes up is sort of like depression. This is Mika Mumper. I really felt like I was, and my wife would say the same thing, that we were in a funk, that we were sort of stuck doing the same things every day, you know, not really having a good time, just sort of going through the motions. He responded to a survey that we put out at the start of the year, asking people about feelings of loneliness and how they were working through them. I was living in New York previously, and I moved to Long Beach because I got a job here. He and his wife moved to Long Beach around five years ago. He said until recently, they felt very isolated and really didn't have a community. We sort of stuck to ourselves for a while. After leaving college, you know, there's not really a great way to start meeting people and making friends. 
We didn't really know anyone except for my brother who lived in Orange County. I met some people at work initially, but then the pandemic sent everyone home. So suddenly I was working remote. You know, it was kind of lonely for a while where we were just sort of stuck in the house. And, and you know, I love my wife, nothing wrong with that. But I, I was sort of looking for more people to spend time with and to find other activities to do and to get out of the house for. So it was kind of a dark place, not a very fun place. We came to a point where we got into a big fight. And I think the next day when we reconciled, we realized we weren't upset at each other. We were just sort of upset at what we had let our lives come to and that we needed to, to make some changes. But then he found something that would surprisingly shake him out of that rut. I joined the Pickleball League a few months ago, probably around October, just sort of on a whim. I mentioned that my brother, he's really into pickleball. and it, it completely changed his whole sense of community as well. He has a bunch of friends. I went to his uh, 40th birthday recently, and 90% of the people there were people he had met through pickleball. And so I was I was like, wow, he's he's really made a ton of friends through this sport. And they were all super friendly, and I, I wanted that for myself. There was a neighbor of mine who I'd watched her dog a few times, and Seemed like a really nice person, didn't really have an opportunity to hang out with her. And I just sort of offhandedly asked if she wanted to play pickleball because my wife wasn't really into it at the time. And I, I wanted a partner to play with and she, she accepted and it sort of took off from there. <laughs> Both in my relationship, with my pickleball partner, who was someone I sort of didn't know very well, but now I consider a really close friend and all the people I've met since playing pickleball, I've really expanded the number of people I've known in my neighborhood tenfold. It's really fun to show up every week and see the same people and they know my name now and I know their name. Now I think I'm really hitting my stride and, and pickleball has been a really big part of that because it, it gets me out of the house, it gets me around other people and it's it's been a really big change in my life and I'm really, really happy that I took the initiative to, to start going. So, pickleball. We've all heard about it. It's definitely been having its big moment the past few years. It's kind of like tennis, kind of like badminton, and people, especially here in LA, are fanatical about it. It's kind of a, a joke in pickleball where the more knee braces that you see on someone, the more likely they will win. <laughs> This is Sana Kim Davis. She's the marketing director at the Santa Monica Pickleball Center. Why is that? Uh, they just know the game better. The difference about this sport is that it's not really a pure power sport. There's a lot more strategy involved, so you'll see a lot more age groups, a lot more personalities meshing, and that's kind of the beauty of it all. We have the biggest pickleball paddle wall in the country, an indoor dink court and also premium courts in the back where we have a lot of lessons, like beginner classes, uh, clinics, live ball, where you'll see 14-year-olds go up against 70-year-olds. Why do you think pickleball is blowing up recently? Kind of. Everyone has missed the human connection aspect of it all, especially with the pandemic. So being able to play a sport where you're meeting new people every day, where party lines are like socioeconomic, doesn't really matter. You're just there to play, to connect, to have fun, to learn and grow better is kind of why everyone enjoys the sport so much. It's like the open play aspect where you're playing with people you have no idea like their skill level, who they are, what they are, and then you just go down and paddle down and just play the game. Part of what's great about uh, the Pickleball Center here is that we consider a community outreach one of our most important pillars. So we sponsor the local club here You'll see people learning and teaching people how to play pickleball every day. Uh, you'll see more advanced players. The skill level doesn't really matter, and people are just there to enjoy the sport and to connect with each other. Sana emphasized this feeling of community, and that for some reason, maybe more so than other sports, pickleball people are really there for each other, on and off the court. More recently, actually, there was an arson incident at the local park where somebody may have set fire or an incendiary device to the shed that held all the equipment. It happened in the middle of the night. We found out about it um, just the, since the community is so small. So, you know, the alarm bells went out. We uh, set up a fundraiser. 
The next morning, uh, we raised over $2,000. We reached out to our suppliers, got them new equipment and uh, nets and everything in the span of a day. But it really goes to show you how much people care about each other, even though it's just um, a sport with a, a wiffle ball. It's really crazy. Like, people really do come together for this sport. It's like all of our friends are like 90% pickleball. You like can have people just doing the nicest things for you because they just play pickleball with you every once in a while. Like we've made a lot of friends through the sport, so it's it's been really nice. When I get on the court, I feel just a lot of excitement. I, I really look forward to working on my skills. I'm still a beginner, but there are lots of beginners. It's, you know, it's not too late to start playing pickleball. So we're all sort of learning together. And when someone gets a really nice shot, everyone cheers and, and goes crazy. Oh, it's so good! <laughs> and, you know, when you do, when you completely miss the ball, you don't, you know, it's okay because the person right after you probably just miss it as well. So it, it's just a lot of fun. I think that's, that's the word I would just use to describe. One of the people who is my the drill instructor had a birthday recently. Of course, he celebrated it at Syncopated Brewing because he goes there for the pickleball on pints. And I was invited and was able to, to hang out with him sort of outside of a, a normal, just regular interaction. So it's nice to build community like that, sort of building friends. And uh, my pickleball partner, Amber, I went to a Super Bowl party at her house and I probably wouldn't have done that if we weren't playing pickleball together. So I'm really starting to develop relationships with people and friendships that I, I hope will last a long time. And how has having this community impacted your kind of day-to-day -day experience? In my day-to-day -day experience, I think this community gives me something to look forward to. I know on Wednesdays and Sundays, you know, I'm going to be playing some pickleball. And so it gives me, you know, in the middle of the work day when I'm, things are dragging, I'm like, okay, I'm going to play some pickleball today. So it gives me, it gives me a goal. It gives me something to, to anticipate throughout the week. And uh, that's I, I, and just having a, a group of people there to whenever you see them and, and you show up and everyone's like, yay, let's play some pickleball. It's, it's a fun, it's a really fun place to be. I feel 100% better than I did before I started playing pickleball. I feel not as depressed. I feel a whole different view of, you know, of my abilities to go out and socialize. I guess I want to say I, 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 it's giving me this new confidence to, to go and talk to people and, and to feel not so isolated by myself. I, I, I feel more open to just striking up conversations with people you know, in the movie theater or the grocery store. I, I just feel less by myself and more willing to just risk a, a, a conversation with a stranger. And I think those small interactions are, are really, really kind of special. That is it for us today, folks. Thanks for listening. This episode is produced by Megan Motel. Catch you next time. Hasta luego. Support for this podcast is made possible by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe that quality journalism makes Los Angeles a better place to live. Hi, it's Brian De Los Santos. Thanks for listening to How to LA. I want to invite you to become an LA's member today during an extra short spring member drive. Donating $10 a month really does help us out. Your support helps us dive into neighborhoods, capture unique experiences, and share them with you. Give today at LA's.com slash join HCLA, and let's keep learning about this beautiful, complicated city together. Gracias.